Hi guys, today we're going to talk about tight versus fast cart designations, what it means and how to apply it to different uh, situations. It's going to be a surprise at the end for those of you in X30, so stay tuned. Typically I'm going to use the GP7 as the tight cart. It has the tightest cornering designation and is considered the quickest and tightest turning cart. Typically I've looked at that and I said cornering means turn radius. Let's compare that to the Aero X3. You can see the cornering designation is way toward the fast end. I imagine that what that meant is it had a wider turn radius and therefore tracks like Parma wouldn't really do as well. So let's go back to the Monaco okay and we're gonna do some quick tests. We're gonna do a speed test and we're gonna do a turn radius test and we'll use this to see what's going on. I'm going to show you the whole sequence just this first time. So the first thing we do is we set it up. I happen to be at um, Death Valley because that's got the longest straightaway. And here we are. I've got full steering lock engaged. And you can see we basically turn from the odd lane into the even lane. And it becomes about even. So that's the turn radius of a tight cart. And I'll do a couple more little donuts here just to show what happens at speed. And that basically tells you what the turn radius of the tight turning cart is. We're gonna scoot down to the end, and I'm just gonna show you this for the Monaco. This is how I do speed testing, or acceleration testing. We're gonna run down to the end, turn around, and then from a standing stop, I'm gonna run all the way down to the end up until I get to a pretty much maximum speed, 65 miles an hour, 66, something like that. And um, I'll then slow down. I don't want to hit the fence on this one because I don't want to damage the cart because I am going to do a true top end. When I get done with this, I load this up into iMovie and that allows me to go through the frames. What I do is I pick the point where the tack moves as zero and then I pick every half second after that and I record the speed and then I make graphs out of it. So here we are in the Monaco. We're at 62, 63, 65, and I slow down to go around the corner. Now what I do is I go around the corner, and, and I'm doing this in the solo race, by the way. Run around the corner, and going backwards here, and now I'm going to turn around, and now we're going to do a flying turn so that we're going to actually try to get the true top end of this cart. And this time I am going to plow into the fence at the end. And so you'll see what the, this is about the longest straight that I've been able to find to do this kind of testing. So 66, bingo, 66. Okay, now I'm gonna repeat this with the arrow. I'm not gonna show you the whole sequence this time. I'm just gonna show you the turn radius and then we'll uh, jump to the graphs and show you what the outcome is. So the arrow should have a wider turn radius because the cornering is, shows being way wider but notice it really doesn't. The turn radius at full lock seems to be almost exactly the same as the Monaco. So then what does that whole tight turn radius thing mean? Well, it obviously means something other than turn radius. It means some stuff with speed and means some stuff with handling. Here's the speed graph. You can see the Monaco accelerates quicker. This is speed to time and the Monaco accelerates quicker but tails off toward the top and the arrow keeps accelerating. If we look at acceleration, we can see that the Monaco is great at the lower end of the range but then lags the arrow as you start to get faster. And that's what you'd expect. So now let's talk about the handling. I've gone back to the Monaco GP7 and I'm gonna run a section of Malaga, which is the S-curves. This is gonna test how quickly the cart responds to inputs at high speed. We can see that we enter the S-curves, and it's hard to tell from the video, but the cart lags a little bit. It's a little bit low. Notice I'm falling behind progressively, and finally I'm basically out into the weeds here. The cart is slow to respond, and then understeers quite a bit at the high speed. So let's go back and take a look at this with the Aero X3. Um, the Aero X3 is faster cornering, so you'd expect it will be quicker response and also uh, will hold the corners better. And so here we go in the same section, and already you can tell it's a little snappier. It stays right glued to the uh, 
to those those tires as we're going through and is, is holding a higher speed going through so so we can see that the Monaco is going to be better at places where there are a lot of turns and you're having to accelerate the arrow is better at high speed but I can hear all the X30 guys saying well what about the CRG how come you didn't include that and there's a very good answer the reason I didn't include the CRG in this analysis is that the CRG is too damn good okay here are the speed graphs again and now the CRG is in gray and you can see it's damn near as fast as the Monaco and stays fast and is st uh, stays accelerating all the way to the top of the range that's why it is such a tremendous card it has some of the characteristics acceleration of the Monaco but deals well with high speed if we take a look at the acceleration there it is and you can see that it stays pretty fast up in the Monaco region and then falls off a little bit maybe not quite as good as the arrow but keep in mind at that speed it's actually going a lot faster than the arrow so the acceleration is a little misleading so now we're going to run the same course here's what it looks like in the CRG pretty good road handling stays pretty tight to the tires and it's you really notice the acceleration coming out as you get on the gas um, interesting thing however is that the CRG actually showed a little slower than the arrow did which was somewhat of a surprise that led me to say well what would the arrow do in a course like the a final of the Port uh, Portugal reverse and this is where the surprise comes in I threw a set of uh, soft tires and good gas and I decided I'd give it a shot I ended up getting a, a first place start by luck and I didn't expect much keep in mind that the world record at this point is about 326 and um, that's the best I had ever been able to do and I noticed as I went through the turn this uh, long left hand I noticed the cart was sticking to the inside a lot better I wasn't even using all the performance so I'm going to just show you the last lap and you'll be able to see the surprise that we have this is a level 2 cart the CRG is a level 4 cart um, the, the handling is tremendous at high speed it just stays almost like it's on rail stays just glued to the line it's on even better than the CRG and uh, as I was running through here I was looking up at the time saying wow I'm running 49 even 48 second laps at one point that's which is tremendous much faster than I do in the CRG this might be a pretty fast run um, it handled a little chicane there pretty well you make the turn for home here and keep in mind 326 was the world record at this point and I looked up and I go good grief we're gonna be really fast 322 four seconds off the world record with a level 2 cart and it's all due to the handling it's the way it handles those fast corners and, and it, you can just really notice it doesn't doesn't understeer it stays right there um, you can see obviously it was my personal best because at the time it was the fastest we had run and it was just a very interesting outcome very very surprising to me and to pretty much everybody else to find out that uh, I basically set a world record in a level 2 cart which was totally a surprise and the little chat section here will let you see everybody else's uh, reaction when I told him I had actually done it in the arrow people couldn't believe it it's just amazing um, anyway that goes to show you what the difference is with uh, tight and fast carts hopefully this changes the way you look at things and will help you going forward in SK